Hello friends, welcome to Friends and Neighbors. I am one of your hosts, Sandra O'Neill, and I am delighted to have Courtney Curtis here as a guest co-host next to me. Thanks for being here, Oh, Courtney. it is such an honor. You guys are such a wonderful team, so thank you for having oh, me. Oh, you're welcome. And you know, on this episode of Friends and Neighbors, we're going to talk about a very serious subject. Um, you know, Young Survival Coalition is an organization that was created by three young breast cancer survivors back in 1998 and you know when you start thinking about cancer um, you really don't think that it can happen at such a young age yes. um, young women are experiencing this and you know what happens when you get this diagnosis where's mm. the support where's the hope where's the encouragement well I want to let you know that young survival coalition is the premier organization dedicated just to that yes. to help support and encourage ones that are going through this journey and it is my sincere honor to have a guest with us who is a provider and a survivor of breast cancer Tamika I want to welcome you to the set thank you so much for being here thank you so much now, you know, I want you to share your God story. I know that um, you wrote that your journey has led you to the testimony and that has led you here to this couch. Can you just open up and tell us um, about your life and how um, you got diagnosed? Well, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, maybe it was a few years ago. And um, I got a chance to go with her, seeing her journey through breast cancer, never imagined that one day it would be me. Right. 10 years later, um, she got diagnosed again. Mm. So she, once she got diagnosed again, by this time, um, testing had changed. Mm. Mm -hmm. So there was a test that we could do to see if we carried a genetic mutation. So my mom, she got tested, her and my sister, they both got tested for it. And they came back and they were BRCA2 positive, both of them. Mm. Well, for a while, I didn't want to get tested. Mm -hmm. um, sure. It was, I had a fear of, I didn't want anybody to tell me anything that I could possibly die from. Mm. Sure. So I ended up um, having an issue and having to go to the doctor mm -hmm. and, um, when I went, he, he said to me, um, you know, your mom got tested and your sister got tested. He was like, you need to get tested. Mm -hmm. um, so I agreed to get tested and I came back BRCA2 positive mm -hmm. too. So now here it is, my mom had cancer again. Um, she was BRCA2, my sister was BRCA2, and I was BRCA2. And for too. the viewership, they don't understand what that is. Can you explain a little yes. bit more what that is? Bracket two. Bracket two. It's a blood test where they um, test your blood and they test to see if there's a genetic mutation in there to where they can tell if you are at risk for cancer. Mm -hmm. Pre-viver is where that term comes from, correct? Yes. So if you are tested positive for the mutation, mm -hmm. you are considered a Previvor, because you are now surviving something that could cause cancer. Mm -hmm. And Tamika, I'm sure that. How did you feel when you got that uh, diagnosis? I know it took the courage we for you sighed. to go out yeah. yes. uh, and yes. get tested. Um, you know, it was hard at first, but mm. then um, I got to thinking, and I said, "Well, you know." it now gives me an opportunity to be tested every six months because mm -hmm. with that, you get to, you now get tested every six months. Mm -hmm. So it gives me the opportunity to be tested every six months and try to catch cancer early if I'm going to get breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, one of those days when I got tested, you know, it was my turn. Yeah. And you talk about in your testimony you shared with us a little bit, one I will mention when you hesitated on getting tested and you finally found out that you tested positive for this type of gene. Her and I both sighed and I can't yeah. imagine, like physically sighed because knowing what that must have felt like in those moments to get news that you were trying to go around finding out, but then 
you went through it, you've come through this, you're walking through it right now. And something that you said, and I, and I wanna mention this, because I think this is such a beautiful testimony for people that are going through, no matter if it's cancer or illness or hardship, you said, I just learned to dance in the rain rather than just waiting for the rain to pass. Rain, meaning this, this, um, this cancer that has been the focal point of your life, you just learn to be able to embrace your life around that. So right. at one, I wanna say, that is beautiful and courageous and courageous yes. and i want to see what got you to the mindset to be able to do that how did jesus transform your life in order for you to be able to have that mindset um right before my journey i had um lost two very important people in my life mm -hmm. which was my aunt and my mm -hmm. grandmother mm -hmm. um my grandmother was the matriarch of our family mm -hmm. her faith was very strong mm. and I spent a lot of time around my grandmother and my aunt yes. and so I knew I didn't have them with me but I had what they had taught me yes to take with me and I you know I just set my mind to it because I couldn't have them with me and it was like I'm not gonna let them down I'm going to lean on what we were taught to do mm. Mm -hmm. And that was lean on my faith. And I knew that if I had nothing else, I had my faith. That is so beautiful because in Hebrews 11, 1, which is my mm -hmm. testimonial verse, it says to have faith is to be sure of the things you hope for and be mm -hmm. certain of the things you cannot see. And I can only imagine you could not see what was going to happen. There was all this uncertainty. How did you become involved with the Young Survivor Coalition organization? Well, when I went to... Um, my first um, breast surgeon appointment, mm -hmm. there was this lady came in the room and she had this navigator. And in the navigator, it said, she, before she handed it to me, she said, there are other young women like you. Mm -hmm. You didn't feel alone. Mm -hmm. to I never had heard of them. Wow. wow. I never knew there was an organization of more women that I could mm. connect with that was just like me. Mm. Um, so that navigator was, it, it was sent. Isn't that amazing? You know, the enemy wants us to feel like we're isolated, yes. that there is nobody like us that is battling what we are battling, but Jesus brings community. He is about community and partnering people in order for that yes. healing process to start, not only just physically, but also emotionally and spiritually. So I'm so blessed to hear that you found other sisters that you can walk through life with who can say, I get it, girl. Like. I get it, really get it from the bottom of your soul, understand, so I think that's amazing. And the organization, how did that encourage you besides, of course, connecting with other, um, what other resources were they able to provide for you? Um, they give you, um, of course, the navigators, um, they give you um, resource binders, mm -hmm. tell you different resources of different things you may need. Yes. Um, not only that, we have, every year we have a conference mm. where, and it's in, a remote location where everybody just comes together. That's great. And it's like a big sisterhood for us. I love that sisterhood. Thank you for being here, Tamika yes. Par Partridge, and sharing your story, and it is a sisterhood. Mm -hmm. We have to take a small break, but we will be back with more survival stories of young women who are battling breast cancer. Uh, we will see you here shortly. Welcome back to Friends and Neighbors, and uh, we've got a wonderful guest, Erica Weathers, and she is a two-time breast cancer yes. survivor. And Erica, I just welcome you to the show, but I just want to say you are truly a survivor, mm. yes. a real survivor. But I would like to ask you to start this off. How did you feel when they first told you you mm. have cancer? Um, it was devastating. I was 33 years old, so um, recently divorced when I was 27, 28, so just trying to figure out where I was going to go in my next step, step in my life and um, got my biopsy and then it came back that the smallest one out of the three lumps was the one that had cancer in it. So my best friend was with me at the time and it was just like, you know, you go through that thing, why me? Yes. You know, there was no history of breast cancer in my family at all. So. After that point, I just said to myself, you know, I'm going to get it out of me and I'm going to be fine, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I knew, you know, you just know some, I mean, 
Yes. You just say, get, get it out of me, get back my life back on track, stop doing some of the things that I shouldn't be doing, and move forward with my life. It, so, so are you saying you changed your lifestyle? How about yes. what you ate, if you worked out, mm -hmm. if you exercised? Because you look yeah, you wonderful. Look I've physical. always been an athlete and I've always worked out, but I was also drinking on the weekends and you know almost like the te the alcoholic tendency kind of you go out Friday Saturday night you get drunk or whatever yeah. so I was smoking not all the time but enough you know where it was in my life yes little smoking a lot of smoking you're smoking so it's still not good for you right. so um, after I went in for my first surgery um, I quit smoking quit drinking, you know, I still have wine every once in a while. Mm -hmm. And I still continued my, my workout schedule because um, I used to work out still about five days a week when I was going through all that. So when people found out I had cancer, they're like, how do you have cancer? Wow. You know, you don't, yeah. you know, what your body looks like or what you look like doesn't look like what's going on inside of it. Absolutely. So, I mean, I was working out with professional athletes and stuff. So it was just, it was just really crazy and devastating and just kind of put like a real stop on my life for a good three years, four years almost, you know, going through that process. And that was the well, first time that you had cancer, correct? Yes. So when did it come back? It came back four years later, right under that mark where they say when you get to the five years, it's like, yay, you made it over the five years, but I didn't. I made it to the fourth year. And um, my first surgery, I had a full mastectomy on my right side, and the cancer came back in that same the breast. The same mm. breast. Mm. Yes, and the first time they should have given me radiation, but they didn't. They just put me on hormonal therapy, the tamoxifen and stuff. And I didn't need chemo, thank God, because that's what really is really makes you know k kills the good cells and the yes. bad cells, and yes. then you really do look sick. So I didn't look sick through my my whole treatments that I was going through. Both um, of them. Both of them. What a blessing. Yes. Yes. Amen. yes. Amen. So the second time I did have the radiation. They took the same breast again, and um, got my expander in and my implant and all that, and went through that whole process again. Mm -hmm. And I am now 10 years cancer free. 10 years 10 cancer years. free. That yes. is a miracle. And you just Seriously. celebrated, right? I just celebrated yes. June 3rd. I had a little party with my girlfriends. Awesome. And, um, <laughs> my family, friends, and nieces and nephews, and my cousins and stuff like that. So it was really great. And, um, and it was amazing. Like, you know, like what I said, you know, why me? Yes. And um, that next week, exactly a Sunday after my celebration, I was at my pool in my condo. And um, I saved a boy from drowning. Mm. Oh, with my wow. skills from being a flight attendant with my CPR. Wow. So it was almost like I was supposed to be there. Yes. I was supposed to, because you don't normally get up and go perform CPR on somebody, give them rescue breaths and try to bring them back to life. Usually you're just sitting there looking like right. everybody else was that day. I was like by myself, it's mm. failed, like, you know. Because right. yes. one lady did start doing something, but then she got up and left and it was almost like, you're not done, right. you know. Yes. Uh, yes. So that right there told me, that was one of my revelations that this is why you saved me. Yes. You know, this is why you put me through this. But I was supposed to be in that corner of the pool that day yes. Yes. and go to work Not and, and save this little boy's life. Yes, well, God well. directs our, foot, our, our footsteps. I, but were you ever mad at God? I never was, and I never had a great relationship. I mean, I always <coughs> believed in God. Mm -hmm. I'm more spiritual than, I, um, than re religious. You know, I've gone to church my whole life on and off, but I've never been stable. I've never found a, a church home that I love and I'm still searching for that right now we'll be yes. praying. and um, yes so I was never mad no because I always knew that I could always talk to him when I wanted to right and that he's blessed me with so many things in my life so I just continue to pray continue to talk to him well do you have a support group um, now or did you then um, my mom has always been there for me, even though we've had our ups and downs. Sure. Don't we all? Always, yes. <laughs> yeah. She's always been my ride or die, my, um, always been there for me to support yes. me in everything that I do. And actually, I just found out she just, she has cancer right yeah. now, and um, hers is oh. cancer of the kidney. That's and it's not bad. Nice. We're going to get it out of her quickly, and we're going to yes. move on. But, um, yes. but yeah, and I'm going to go home and be there for her when she has Amen. her surgery. Yes. Amen. Amen. I was a perfect, perfect person in order to have in her life who has gone through what cancer can only, I think, really impact somebody who's gone through it. 
yes. feel like. So the fact that you have gone through that fire not once but twice mm -hmm. and are able to stand beside your mom in a time where she has a lot of questions and a lot of stirrings, I think. A lot it's of pain. Just, yeah, a lot yeah. of pain. I mm -hmm. think it's just a beautiful testimony to how the Lord has brought you through something to be able to bless somebody else. So. But she, was, she has seen you go yes. through it and be strong. Right. And she knows that she can yes. count on you to help her to be strong yes. at her time also. Yeah. Uh, but uh, one thing I've always wondered, how did you find your cancer the first time? Um, I've always had, you know, dense breasts. They were, you know, lumpy sometimes during our periods and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, so a doctor just did a biopsy, and not a biopsy, an ultrasound to see what was going on in there. Because a lot of times it's just cysts that need to be drained or something like that. There was three masses in there, a big, a small, and a medium. The first time they checked it, the big one, thinking that they'd all just be in the same family, and that one came back benign. A year later, I changed doctors, and she wanted me to go back just to check them again. The smallest out of the three is the one that grew and had the cancer in it, mm -hmm. so then that's when I started my, my, all of my stuff that I went through. Well, what about, we were talking about, you, you, you're, you're still exercising and everything, but what about your diet? Because I know so many people go organic, Change, yeah, they go organic, right. and we've got one minute. Did you do that also? Um, I tried to eat a lot cleaner than I used to, and I started taking different, um, you know, supplements that were supposed to help as well. Mm. And um, you, do it for, you do it for a little while, because you get yourself, you, get, you want, try to read all these books, you try to get to do the, all the right things. Right. Yes. And, um, you know, the organic thing, you can do it for so long, you know, because it is very expensive to try to do that sometimes. But I still try to eat as clean as I can. I'm still working on getting caffeine out of my diet. But, so I'm down to like one cup of coffee a day, but I know I need to clean myself with the caffeine because that's really a big thing too. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we've got to take a break right here. I wanted to hear more. Maybe you can come back sometime <laughs> yes. and tell us more. Thank you. But we're going to take a break. Stay with us. We're going to come back with more testimonies with friends and neighbors and Miss Courtney. <laughs> Welcome back to Friends and Neighbors. I am our uh, special, not really special, but just humbled. You are so <laughs> close. Yeah, you hello, are. Sandra and Sherry. I'm just blessed to be here today. We have been having some really powerful testimonies from women that have come from the Young Survival Coalition. And, and this is a group of women who have been diagnosed with breast cancer at a younger age, so less than 35 mm -hmm. years old. And so again, we have been hearing some things today that have truly humbled us. And right now we have a guest who, reading her testimony, she's walking through the fire right now. And it is my honor to introduce you to Caitlin Hill. How are you today? I'm doing great, yeah. Good. Yeah. All right, so you were diagnosed 2017. Yes. Tell me how that started. Well, I um, found the lump myself mm. in April of 2017, and I went to my gynecologist, and she was like, okay, let's go get it checked out. So I did a mammogram and an ultrasound and uh, met with a breast surgeon, and she assured me it was nothing, mm. nothing to worry about. It was just a cyst. You know, it wouldn't increase my chances of cancer. And fast forward six months to October, and it kept growing, and I knew something was wrong. So mm. I went back, and my gynecologist referred me to a different surgeon, and he went to go drain it because we thought it was a cyst, and he immediately was like, oh, this is cancer, this is not a cyst. Oh, wow. So yeah, at that point it had grown to eight centimeters, and it was stage three with lymph node affected, yeah. Oh, yeah. How hard was that for you as yeah. you were going through this process of, one, getting your hopes up? That, yeah, exactly. Oh, like, oh, you can drain it, be done. Yeah. Right, and then yeah. the next you're hearing the news, all right, cancer, we got yeah. it rolling. How it was, was it was intense, yeah, I think for me, the hardest part was telling my family. Like mm. my family is all lives in Wisconsin, and mm. I think making that phone call to my family and my close friends was the hardest because I knew how it was going to affect their life. Like yes. you know, I felt like I can handle it no matter yeah. what. You know, it's more of you know how they will. What handle has it. been the hardest part mm. for you in this, um, Caitlin? I think just accepting it. Like it's you know, it's yeah. it's my life now, and I think um, at first I you know I fought it and didn't want to accept that this is happening to me, you know, and of course I got gloom and doom for a little bit, you know, and I think finally realizing that you can do what you want with this, but, you know, I've there's always, no point but, in But don't you think a positive attitude? Oh, for sure. 
Yeah. It's yeah. better. I, I, yes. I do. I, I think, I know you have probably had to go through that yeah. period, of, but then you have to come out and be yeah. positive that right. I'm going to lick this. Yeah. At this point, it's made yes. my life better. Like, yes. I am grateful for it. Like, it's, yes. you know, it's opened my eyes to a lot of things. And, and that's what we perceived when you walked into the set and uh, the, just the radiance and the smile. And that's one of the things that Courtney and I kind of looked, glanced at each other because we were like, you know, for you to be going through the fire right now yeah. and have that beautiful, beautiful smile, yeah. the radiance radiance that's in your face. Sweetness. You know, we do. Yeah. We do have to go through that dark mm -hmm. period because, I, yes, I'm going to be angry. I'm going to be upset that all of this is happening. Exactly. But, um, I really want to hear more about how you got plugged in with the Young, young Survivor Coalition. Young Survivors, yes. Yeah, well, my um, oncologist actually put me in touch with the organization. So I emailed and signed up, and um, they immediately put you in touch with somebody that with a similar diagnosis that's already gone through this. Because mm. at that point, you're thinking, like, I'm 33. Right. 34, I was 34 when it happened. Like I'm 30, like everybody in the doctor's office is like in their 60s and mm -hmm. 70s, you know? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, my goodness, this yeah. is totally different for me than what they're going through, you know? And just being able to talk to somebody else that was at a similar age and similar diagnosis, because I'm triple negative. Um, what does that mean? Yeah, what does that um, mean? My, I'm estrogen negative, HER2 negative, and uh, progesterone negative. So um, they can't use tamoxifen and things to control our cells from reproducing and coming back after our initial diagnosis. Uh, 10 really? to 15% of women are triple negative when diagnosed. Mm. So are you yeah. treated differently knowing yes. that? Yes. How, what does the treatment look um, like for you? So actually my aunt actually is not triple negative and so she's currently doing you know estrogen blocker pills and she'll do that you know for the rest of her life to try to prevent it from coming back and ours is they don't really know mm. yet at this point what to keep doing. <laughs> so we're guinea pigs, you know? Yeah. yeah. So we do clinical trials and we, we hope that they find something wonderful. You're to going to do one, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. A Hopefully. clinical yes. trial. Yes. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that is amazing. I can't imagine your journey, but I am so hopeful because of one, just your spirit right now. Like you are more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ as it yes. says in scripture. Thank and you. so for somebody who's out there, I know we have a lot of breast cancer survivors, mm -hmm. people that are going through the fire right now, somebody who's watching today, what word of encouragement could you give them as they're going through this? Um, be positive, embrace it, you know, make it the best you can and try to improve it and improve yourself along with it. Yeah, yeah. live life. Yeah, exactly, yes. exactly, appreciate it, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I would think that my friend died, uh, oh, she lived 17 years, wonderful life she had for 17 years, and she said, life is a gift. Mm -hmm. yes. You gotta appreciate, she said, I learned to appreciate and to be thankful for so many things that I took exactly. for granted yeah. before, but you live life. Exactly. Amen, yeah. Miss yes. Kate, yeah. yes. I love that, and take every single day as a gift, as a like gift. every single day, thank the Lord that you got up that morning, that you had the energy to get up that yes. morning, that you were able to do the small things. Exactly, right? and don't let the small things bother you. Right, yeah. right, yeah. or even think about things, maybe I know like yeah. if we've gone through something and then you think, oh my gosh, well I'm not able to do this mm -hmm. like I used to, yeah. but to say, but today. Yeah, I'm doing more, I'm, I'm doing more now I than I was it. before. So yeah. it's more energy yeah. than I have. Yeah, yeah thank you. I, mean, yeah. So yeah. I love yeah. it, yeah. you know, so friendly. Yeah. So it's a perspective It is, definitely. shift of your Exactly. It's a wake-up call for me. It was a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. I'm eating cleaner. You know, I'm working out seven days a week, and I'm in the best shape I've ever been in in my life. So and did you just, wonder? Yeah. You were. I mean, you're in your mid thirties. Did you wonder what did I? What was I just not eating well? I mean, yeah. Oh my God, I was addicted to sugar. Yeah. What, what, yeah. 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 That what? I mean, yeah. that's the education side. It is. Of it, it is. The diet side know. is not focused on enough. You know, yes. like really. it's what we put in our bodies has a yes. huge impact on what's going on. So and, talking to our viewership, mm -hmm. saying, you know, someone who is worried and they want to live a healthier life, would you encourage them? Is it the Diet. I mean, exercise, sugar and diet. exercise. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I fast a feed once a month. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just to clean out my system, and it makes me feel amazing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you are convicting me right I know, now. You I do it. Yes. Sugar, so I'm like, oh, oh no, you got to cut that out. Yeah, yeah. Tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> a sweet yeah. every now and then. Yes. Yeah. You, yeah. you know, but you got partnered in with a mentor at the YSC, mm -hmm. and are you still walking with your mentor? Yeah, we still are in touch every now and then. Yeah, and I've also met other amazing women, you know, through treatment on the way and. I'm in touch with them all the time. And yeah, tell me about yeah. that, knowing that you, how did you get started with them, though? Like, how did you find them? Did you just research them? And you're like, oh, this is great. And yeah, 
I'm gonna... Yeah, with YSE. Yeah, okay. I just okay. you know, I was just searching things on the internet and right. um, First Ascent is also another amazing program for younger people with cancer. They send mm. I went rock climbing in the Adirondacks this summer and awesome. yeah, Oh they do girl, good yeah. for you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Would that be something that you would have not done? You said you would you're doing I always more wanted now. to. Yeah. I always wanted to, but it was like this was like the push to do it. Yeah. 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 Isn't that I so want to go skydiving yes. and scuba diving. Yeah. Yes, good. You I love the attitude of live your dash. Yeah, that's my new thing. I love that. Live, live your dash. dash. We, yeah. We're talking about that at a, mm. uh, another event, but it's like be fierce, right? Exactly. And right. courageous. Yep. God did it, not it. give us a spirit of fear, of fear but of courage in mm. Him. And I love that. Yes. If we only um, live that daily without having a diagnosis or that mm. impetus to say, oh, dear Lord. Yes. Uh, so you are an inspiration and all the three women that we have been talking yeah, to the entire show. I want to just share real quickly if, about the YSE and how amazing it is that you guys, uh, you start growing in it. Uh, the first guest, for example, Tamika Partridge, she is now a mentor uh, for YSE. And she's also has an organization that helps because you think about the kids and how they were affected as a mom. Mm. So she She's got an organization with that. And um, I speak of that because are you, I mean, with your daily walk and your reflection of God, what are you, what has he called you to do besides, of course, doing what you're doing fully? Yeah, I think just reaching out to other people, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, being... Positive, positive and yeah, let them like, know that it's not, you know, it's not a death sentence. Like, you right. know, yes. we can do this Amen. and yes. yeah, embrace it. And Caitlin, like, like, thank you so much for being here. Haircut. We're a minute out. I know. <laughs> and I love yes. your hair. Yes. I love yes. it. I mean, and that's where I saw the <laughs> fierce. Yes. Yes. I'm like yes. fierce yes. right there. Oh, boy, I love right. it. Yeah. Warrior and fierce. Listen, we have yes. 30 seconds to oh. wrap this whole uh, program up. And I just want to say it has been an honor to sit with every single yes. individual Amen. here and hear how God can be yes. glorified through your stories. Thank you so much for yes. being thank here. You. And thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, being a light within the people that are around you. Yeah. Take a yeah. moment to think, what am I putting in my body? It's very mm -hmm. important. Yes. And remember, you are God's treasure. God loves you. Jesus loves you. And so do we. We will see you next time, <laughs> friends and neighbors. Yes. Thank you.